So now coming to what we are going to be presenting today, uh, every country has got a national anthem. You know, every country has got a national anthem, and every country is recognized by that particular national anthem and that piece of music. And that is the power of music. But at the same time, most countries, their national anthems are a little controversial, or some people like it, some people don't like it, or uh, some political party creates some problems about the national anthem and says that this is not what is representing our country. Whereas India is very different, where the national anthem is the most revered piece of music that we have across political ideologies, philosophies, uh, backgrounds, cultures, traditions, language barriers, geographic location. Everybody in India absolutely love our national anthem. Mm. And again, when the first few notes of the national anthem is played, everybody feels a very, very strong sense of patriotism and love for our country and pride for our country. And I'm no different being an Indian. In fact, the first piece of music that I ever learned uh, as a human being is basically the Indian national anthem before I even learned nursery rhymes or before I learned lullabies. So, the anthem and the music is completely in my blood and it's something that I absolutely love with all my heart. It's a piece of music that is my favorite piece of music in the whole world. So in the past I've created many versions of the national anthem. In my professional career, I've had a music, a professional career in music for the last 24 years. In these 24 years I've created three versions of the national anthem in the past. So one I created was for the COP21, that is the climate change conference which happened in Paris in uh, 2015. So the Paris climate change conference or the COP21 was the largest conference of nations from all over the world. 195 countries coming together, that is world leaders, presidents and prime ministers from 95 countries, 195 countries coming together to try to understand what climate change is and how to mitigate the effects of climate change and create a future that is better for our future generations. So over there I created a version of the national anthem which is dedicated to the forests and wildlife of India because I believe that India, all of us believe that India is much more than just human beings. Uh, you know, uh, India is defined by our forests and wildlife, our beauty is defined by our forests and wildlife, our sustainability is defined by our beautiful forests and wildlife and in fact we as human beings have been in this, uh, on this land for only 3 lakh years but our forests and wildlife have been here for 3000 lakh years. So to signify all of this and to signify that even the forests and wildlife are a part of our country, I created a version of our national anthem, which was quite successful and played all over the world. The second version I created last year, that was in uh, 2022. Uh, so uh, India has been home to a lot of refugees from all over the world and these refugees who come to India, uh, they feel very welcome in India, they feel welcome as if it is their new home. And uh, some of these refugees are fantastic musicians. Uh, and some of them have been forced to leave their country because they are musicians. You know, sometimes they have left on the threat of, of death or uh, under dire circumstances, just with the clothes on their back, they've had to leave the country and India has been a very welcoming home for them. So, along with the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, that is the UN Refugees Organization, I created a version of the National Anthem where I sang the National Anthem along with 12 refugees from Sri Lanka, from Myanmar, from uh, uh, from uh, Afghanistan and from Cameroon. Uh, fantastic singers, we created a version of the National Anthem and that National Anthem was very successful uh, last year, that version of the National Anthem. This year, I've gone on to do something very, very special and it's absolutely epic. It's the biggest version of the National Anthem that I've ever created. So what I did was that uh, I've collaborated with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London many times. In fact, my Grammy-winning albums has got the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, uh, you know, featured in it. And uh, this time what I did was that I collaborated with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra at Abbey Road Studios. And this time, normally the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra is 75 piece or 65 piece. This time we went with a 100 piece orchestra. So this is, uh, and I conducted the orchestra as a conductor. And uh, we performed the Indian National Anthem. And so it's the biggest symphony orchestra ever uh, to record the Indian National Anthem. So that is, uh, that is how amazing this is. And of course it is a British orchestra. So it's got an added story that, you know, that the British have ruled us for um, almost 200 years and now it's an Indian person conducting uh, their most in-demand orchestra, that is the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and a 100-piece orchestra at the most legendary studios, that is Abbey Road Studios, which is the most legendary studio and the most iconic studio in the whole world and performing uh, the Indian National Anthem. So it gave me a lot of pride, it gave me a lot of humility to actually uh, uh, conduct this particular orchestra and get them uh, to perform the Indian National Anthem. So, it's been a wonderful experience, obviously. It's been an absolutely wonderful experience and I plan to release this anthem 
on the 14th of August, that is the eve of our Independence Day, on the 14th of August at 5 p.m. So 14th of August at 5 p.m. is when we will be releasing this video. We've done the constitutional version of the national anthem, which is between 52 to 53 seconds. So that way, we are hoping that as many people use this particular version of the national anthem for the events and everywhere, because I'm going to be gifting this particular version of the national anthem <coughs> to the whole country and to Indians everywhere, anywhere in the world. <coughs> Permission from me or without any royalties, nothing. Anybody can just use the national anthem however they want. But it, the only caveat that we have, the only condition we have is that you cannot tamper with the national anthem, the version, and you cannot change the video. You have to use it as it is. So as long as you use it as it is, it's free for use for anybody and it's just our gift, completely free because this anthem has been completely self-funded, so there is no involvement from anybody, so it's free for everybody to use. Wow. So without further ado, what, we, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to play this version of the national anthem for you. So if you would please indulge me, let us all rise. And you said like uh, whoever wants to use it, they can use it and that would be totally free of uh, cost, yeah. But no tampering like you said. No tampering, yeah. yeah. I was just thinking like, you know, okay, when uh, it was being played, I was thinking of like, you know, uh, seeing the national anthem myself, you know, how would you try, try to keep a track also on that particular thing, like, you know, as if it would be a free thing, so just what I had that question, okay, how would you keep a track that thing is not being tampered, and this is just a music of the like, national anthem. I think and, that will be uh, sort of, uh, uh, what I'm hoping for is that it's difficult for us to keep track about these things, even if it's a film song or whatever, it's difficult to keep track of people who are desecrating, like, you know, our art. But I'm hoping that since this is a national anthem and with so many of us who love our country, I think it will be self-done, you know. If somebody tampers with the anthem and desecrates it and does it in a bad way, I think people will automatically troll those people, you know. So I think uh, that will happen. Uh, I'm hoping that that happens automatically where everybody come together and they sort of like, you know, help us out and they ensure that a disrespectful version of this does not show up. I mean, I just mean to think yours is just some music. Correct, it's I instrumental. Want to, I want to sing my national anthem so along can, with that thing. You know, so if that permission is there, I, I just but need you to can, that. You can just sing it because if it's respectful, then nobody is going to tell anything. Even I'm not going to say anything about it. So it's not like I'm going to be very strict that it's only going to be this because somebody put some visuals to it which is absolutely amazing. That's also fine. The only reason why I put this caveat is that uh, to prevent any desecration of it. But obviously, somebody can use just the instrumental if it is, let's say, it's a school assembly and there is no big screen for it to be played. Then somebody can just play the music. It does not matter. As long as everybody is respectful to it. Yeah. Because that's my main objective. You have to be respectful to it. So even if there is no video to it or you change the video, that's all fine. But at the same time, it's very important to have the respect for the anthem. That's yeah. it. Uh, the thing is, how did you come up with this particular like, piece of orchestra? Like 100, 100, and that also pretty sure. Yeah. And as you said, like, you know, they ruled us for yeah. 100 years. Uh, how did you convince them? And no, they were very, happy. they were very happy to do it, actually. They were very, very happy to do it. And they wanted to do this as a gift also to India. So they were very happy uh, to do this. And uh, I've collaborated with them, as I mentioned, multiple times in the past. In fact, two to three times I've collaborated with the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, but not with this size. So uh, this was the largest size that I've collaborated with. and. Uh, uh, so basically that when I voiced it out to them that, you know, I would like to record the Indian National Anthem, they were just happy to do it. They were very, very happy to do it. And especially now that there is a claim that this is the biggest symphony orchestra to ever record the Indian National Anthem, that made them even more happier because um, at the end of the day, you know, the British and Indian relationships have never been better than what it is today. So everybody is very, very happy. Um, and it's a new India at the end of the day, you know, like this also signifies that, you know, that people want to do things for India. People want to... Uh, you know, collaborate with Indians. People want to showcase India in a beautiful way to show that we are friends. Prime Minister Modi's visits also, if you look at it, to France and to uh, USA. In fact, I was there at the state dinner when Prime Minister Modi and uh, President Macron were having dinner. So it was me sitting down, then President Macron and Prime Minister Modi at the dinner, you know. So, and I was privy to their conversations. I saw how amazing it was, how much of respect the French President was giving our Prime Minister. And uh, the French President having conversations with me, you know, about about our relationships and all of that stuff. So it, 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 I believe that, you know, that uh, people all over the world want to do things for India and want to collaborate with India. And this is a great testimony to that. I, I, just want, I just wanted to mention that you are making India really proud. Like, I just wanted to mention that. I hope I am. Yeah. <laughs> of course you are. I just met you on Preeti Moon interview. Yeah, of course. Like we were discussing uh, outside also. There's a lot of emotional factor attached to this. And while creating such a masterpiece yourself, so uh, coming back to the, uh, the, the 
uh, how are you going to uh, collaborate with the government of India on this to actually since you said you're releasing it on August 14th and that's also uh, by the way Pakistan's independence day so I'm part of our independence yeah, day correct so uh, are you going to collaborate uh, with the, the government of India on this is our uh, prime minister going to uh, make an official announcement on this uh, right now there is no talk about that but I'm hoping because the, uh, so what I forgot to mention is that I actually recorded this on the 7th of August just day before yesterday so I came directly to uh, the Leela Hotel from London this morning so that is what so I recorded just day before yesterday and we edited it in record time so we recorded it at Abbey Road Studios from 2 o'clock to 5 o'clock on uh, on the 7th in London time so at 5 o'clock which was approximately about 10 o'clock 10 10 30 p.m. India time that is when I uploaded the files to our editor, who is in uh, Bangalore. And uh, so by the time I landed over here, the edit was ready. So that is how it was done. It was done in record time. And uh, yeah, so basically that. So right now, the anthem, you all are the first people uh, besides me who has watched this anthem today. Uh, so because it is just literally ready just now. So uh, right now is when the discussions will start. Because without having anything in my hand, it's impossible to have discussions with the government and to showcase, you know, so. And the other thing what I wanted to mention is that uh, since it's free for all, on October, I'm sorry, on uh, August 14th at 5 p.m. eve of Independence Day, my sincere request to everybody is that we are not going to be releasing it on one channel and everybody go over there. So what I'm going to do is that if you all can leave your uh, uh, your details, like, you know, email IDs or WhatsApp numbers with Neeraji, then what I will do is that I will send the anthem on 14th in the morning to everybody. And if you can just hold it, hold off releasing the anthem till 5 o'clock, that would be really good. And I would sincerely appreciate that. From 5.01 onwards, you can just post it in your own, uh, on your own channels, wherever you all want, on whichever channels. And, it, and also, you all can add an introduction yourself. Like, for example, if you've got your own channel, you can just add like a 45 second or 30 second introduction describing it and, you know, and attach it to the video and put it out. So I would be very, very grateful if everybody does that. Even if it is on your own personal social media, please upload it because we're not looking at just one upload where everybody goes there. We want everybody to upload it. Uh, Ricky, hi. This is Russell De Silva from Press Trust of India. Hi. Uh, I must say, first and foremost, before I put forth my question, that uh, your investment is, as a film critic, I go regularly to the theater and as you, as you no, I, know, I know of your, of your work, yeah. Yes, as you would yeah. know of that uh, the national anthem is played over before each movie. Correct. But right now, the goosebumps are at God's stand. Yeah. He's watching you over there at Abbey Road Studio. It doesn't compare to your it every time in the theater. I don't know why, I can't put a finger on it. But the thing is that the theater thing, I've tried to crack that, you know, like uh, even with my previous version, which was dedicated to the forest and wildlife. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've not found, a, to, to, I'm just being frank and candid over here, I've not found any headway into getting the theaters to actually play this. So if anybody can help me out, as I said, it's free for all. I'll give you whatever resolutions you want. If it needs to, if there needs to be an Atmos mix, I'll get that also done. I'll do whatever it takes to get into theatres. I really, really want this to get into theatres. So if there is any way we can get into theatres, I'm completely, absolutely game. I heard that there is a mandate that it, uh, that the visual has to be only the flag. I've even got that ready. So I've got an animation of the flag which can be the video of it, if that is the mandate, if we cannot have these visuals. So I can give you the same version with an animated version, a beautiful animated version of the flag. Because currently, if you see the flag animation which is there in the theatres, it's, I think, a three or four second loop and it keeps fading, cross-fading into each other. But I've got a proper 60 second loop which will play throughout. And, uh, you know, and I can create a good version of it. But I just need help in cracking this and getting into theatres. Also, you did say that uh, before you learned to sing a lullaby, yeah. it's the national anthem that uh, first caught your attention. Correct. Uh, growing up, uh, is there any particular musician's version of the national anthem or probably any patriotic song? that really touched your pulse as an artist yourself? So I wouldn't say it was a particular song or particular music, but it was musicians themselves. Like the, my greatest inspiration in my entire life has been Pandit Ravi Shankar. And again, because Pandit Ravi Shankar, the thing is that there is that feeling of India every time he played the sitar. And he would collaborate with all these Western musicians, but he would be true to himself. And now, before he came into the picture, whenever Indian music was used in a collaboration, it was a little sprinkling of the sitar or one tabla hit or, you know, a tanpura playing somewhere, like, you know, just as a flavor, it was used. But when he collaborated with the Western people, it was a 50-50% collaboration. So I used to feel very proud of our country. And the other thing, if I may digress a little bit, 
because uh, just to explain to you why I feel that it is very wait 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 wait. My patriotic to me is that when a Bollywood singer or a Bollywood composer, when they perform anywhere in the world, whether it is New York or New Jersey or you know or Moscow or Berlin or wherever, they always are able to fill up a complete stadium. They are able to fill up a stadium. They are able to fill up a complete arena or a hall or whatever, and they get a huge audience. But that audience is mostly the Indian diaspora. About 99% of that audience is the Indian diaspora. Because Bollywood, even except with a few exceptions, Bollywood has actually not broken cultural barriers, but a few exceptions are there where Bollywood has actually broken cultural barriers. But when you look at the classical musicians like Pandit Ravi Shankar, Pandit Vishwamohan Bhatt, Ustad Ali Akbar Khan, Ustad Zakir Hussain, uh, Anushka Shankar, all of these musicians. In fact, when I was 19 years old, I had gone to San Francisco and I watched a concert of Pandit Ravi Shankar. And what shocked me of that concert is that there must have been about 1,500 people in the audience. And the audience inside the auditorium was very reflective of uh, the demographic of the city itself. Because inside the audience, about 80% of the people were people who were natives of uh, San Francisco. And uh, the rest of them were, you know, were, uh, uh, were people from India, people from China, people from Latin America, and things like that. And then that is when I realized that it's these traditional musicians who have actually broken cultural barriers. And the best part is that they're not trying to ape the West. What they're doing, and they're not trying to follow current trends. They're just playing what is true to their own heart and true to their own culture. And they're digging deep into themselves and figuring out what is it that makes them uniquely Indian. And they're showcasing that to the world. So for me, any music of uh, any of these amazing classical musicians has always been an inspiration for me. Not only the music, but them as a personality. <coughs> One more question. Sure. As uh, amazing as this feat is, like uh, going to Abbey Road, yeah. uh, the world's biggest uh, studio, and uh, performing the national anthem with a full British orchestra. Do you think so? It would ever be possible for a British show and American to come to India to one of our studios and perform the national and their national anthem with an all Indian orchestra? And uh, would the Indian public say be as as accepting of it as the British shows have been? That's already happened in the past. I've uh, created a, a sort of like slightly Indian version of the Canadian national anthem when I performed over there, and I created that. But anyway, so but that was not at this particular magnitude. But at the same time, I believe that uh, the thought process can be slightly different because a symphony orchestra is a Western concept. So what needs to happen is that them coming over here and probably recording a national anthem with Indian instrumentation. And I'm pretty sure that that is going to happen because that is the way forward. Because everybody is looking for diversity, everybody is looking for different ways of representing the national anthem. That is one thing. Second thing is that, uh, I believe, this is my personal opinion, so don't hold me to it, but no other country has got a national anthem like India where it is revered across the country, where they take it that seriously. They'll probably have another song, like a pop song or something like that, that all of them love, that they will record in an Indian way, which has happened, like the James Bond theme, and, uh, you know, and uh, the theme for Mission Impossible, and the theme for Titanic. These are songs that they will record, but the thing is that they do not revere the national anthem in their country the way that we revere a national anthem. So I, so I believe that maybe that might not happen simply because they will not care about their national anthem to actually record it in another country, but they'll care about their other stuff. And that has happened time and again, where their very, very popular songs have been uh, done with Indian orchestras and Indian ensembles and all of that stuff. But I don't think they care about their national anthem as much as we do. Namaskar, Vicky. This is Ashish from Delhi Bhaskar. Yeah. Ah, there you are. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. On a lighter note, I have a Royal Philharmonic Orchestra, which has been in the United States, which has been in <laughs> the thing is that uh, I joked with them. So that video I have not yet edited it, but I'll send it to everybody. Before we started doing the national anthem, performing it, I actually spoke to them. And I told them, you know, during the time I told them that, you know, this will be the biggest symphony orchestra to record the national anthem. And I'm very honored to, uh, to work with you yet again after working with you in the past. So what's up, Menebola? And then I said that I laughed and I told them that and after ruling us for 
after you people ruled us for 200 years, this will be the best gift you can give to India. Of course, everybody laughed and, but not laughed at me, but you know, they all laughed in acknowledgement, you know. And that made them work very, very hard to give me the best product. Because they felt it, you know, that this is a gift that we have to give to Indians. And I felt it in their performance. Because I do not believe, I've worked with them so many times in the past, and I do not believe that uh, this kind of effort and this kind of quality I've ever gotten in the past. Because they really worked hard and they wanted to give this to 1.4 billion Indians. موسیقی So, I believe that the music that is made right now in the Hindi film industry is extremely high quality. Uh, I believe that the production quality, the singers, the music, the beats, the production, the mixing, mastering, it's, it's parallel with everything. So, I, I do not believe that there is a dearth of quality. I think quality is absolutely stunning. And you and I listen to Bollywood music all the time. The only thing is that I would love to be a part of a, uh, of a Bollywood film if the film at the core of it is about a very strong social message. Because then I would resonate with it and then I would be able to, you know, uh, I would be able to give my best to the movie because it would be something that I absolutely believe in. So that is very important uh, for me. Uh, because uh, for me, what does not excite me is somebody paying me money and asking me to make music, you know, based on their sensibility. For me, what I, excites me more is that I have this idea that, you know, that I want to get this national anthem done by the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra and I go with all my might and I do this, you know. Or there is a social cause, like for example, a refugee crisis or there is a so, there is an environmental cause, just a human and elephant conflict and uspar mein music bana So for me, these are the things that excite me a lot, you know, doing things which I feel very strongly about. Indian cinema, if you collaborate with a maker, who will be with you? Or any actor who will collaborate with you? It's very difficult for me to say because there are lots of them. Musicians, I can tell you a lot. Like, I've collaborated with Mr. Shankar Mahadevan many times. Uh, Salim Sulemanji, they are almost like brothers to me. We've collaborated many times. So, there are lots of musicians like there are Aditya Narayan, Jonita Gandhi. I've collaborated with them. But uh, filmmakers, uh, it's, difficult, uh, it's, uh, it's difficult for me to uh, say. There are lots of them actually. Because if I, there are one or two names come to my mind, but I don't want to say those names because I will be leaving out many other names. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ricky, for how long you have been uh, uh, planning, over here? Ah, there, there. So for how long you have been uh, planning to uh, shoot this and uh, record the entire national anthem? And my second question is, how are you trying to uh, uh, get this to the root level in India? You know, where social media doesn't exist. So for those people or over there, in connection with the government of India, maybe for that matter, or for social causes, how are you planning to take that? So the planning of this has been about, uh, it's not been very long, it's been about three months. Uh, so three months back is when I got the idea that we should be doing this, and I should be doing this, and that is when I approached the orchestra and, you know, and came up with the score, because it's very difficult to come up with that score, because every musician needs a sheet in front of them, you know, of what to play. So to write that score and to come up with it, where everything comes together beautifully, because until the orchestra plays it, you do not know how it's going to sound, you know, with all these musicians together. So that, uh, so that uh, took a while for me to actually write it and to understand that this is going to sound good. And then the experience of hearing the orchestra playing it to you is, is an experience which is unparalleled. Because you're in that room and the orchestra is playing your music back to you, whatever you've written. They're playing it back to you. That, that is like, a, uh, there is no way words to describe how amazing it feels to listen to 100 people playing it back to you in the same room. So that was, uh, uh, so it was three months to answer your question. The second thing about reaching to the grassroots, one thing is, uh, one way that I've answered it is that it's free for all. So anybody can use it for whatever purposes they want. And of course I need the support of the, the press, you know, because at the end of the day, traditional media is what is most important when it comes to t uh, television and print media, where to get, uh, to get out to as many people as possible. Everybody's got mobile phones, so, you know, sharing it on WhatsApp, and all of that stuff, because there's no restrictions for it, so anybody can share it however they want. So I'm just hoping that organically it reaches uh, every single person. So I just need help with that, because 
as I said, you know, there was no other entity involved in this. So the thing is that, uh, so it's not like there is a major record label like a T-Series or anybody involved in it where, you know, where they can help me spread it out. So it's just, it has to be organic, that's all. So I just need everybody's support for that. Ricky, your center. Uh, Rahul is from the Filmy Jancha. My question was that if someone is in the music industry, then the film industry is the first thing in the mind. Shortcut, fame, the line light. So, in your mind, how did you stop the national anthem for culture? How did you stop the risk or what did you think? I think, good question. So, I'm just wondering how to answer that. So, that is true what you said, that uh, the film industry gives you fame, you know, that, that is there. Now the thing is that I've got a lot of friends who are in the film industry, like, you know, musicians, very, very good musicians, very close friends and very good composers. Some of them are the top composers. Now the thing is that every song that they make is either a love song or an item song. There are only two songs that uh, in predominantly that they are making. And these are people who speak about gender equality all the time and they genuinely believe in it. They genuinely from the heart believe that, you know, in gender equality, they believe in, uh, in uh, impacting society in a positive way and all of that stuff. But then sometimes they come up with an item song, you know, which is objectifying women and, uh, you know, which is showcasing women as, uh, you know, as items because that's the whole definition of an item song. And these things make me a little sad because at the end of the day, music is an art form, okay? Now, if you look at a, I'm sorry I'm digressing, but I'm trying to explain it a little bit. So if you look at an artist like uh, Vincent Van Gogh, who is a very, very popular artist and a contemporary artist, because he's not like an ancient artist. If he was making a new painting, if he wanted to make a new painting, then he won't go to all the neighboring art galleries and see what they're doing. I'll do this too, what's the trend, what's the trend, what's the trend, and all that stuff. He would dig deep into his own soul and he would make a piece of art which is representative of him. And if I wanted to know what kind of a person Vincent Van Gogh is in real life, I'm not going to read a book about him. I will see all the pictures of him and I will judge him that he was a man. You know, a tormented man, a little weird man, you know, I'll, I'll judge his paintings and I'll do that. But right now, when it comes to musicians in India, everybody's dream is that as soon as I become a musician, I have to do Bollywood. When I say to people that I am a composer, the first question is, who is it? You know, so this is India. Mein hai. And that is why all the music in India is basically, or not all, but most of the music in India is basically either a love song or an item song. And I think that these are very good composers, very good human beings, genuinely they are very, very good people. They are not listening to their own music. They are not the kind of people who sit down at home and listen to their own music. You know, because they, because they are not the kind of people who will listen to an item song, you know. So that has, I feel that in some way that has to change. And for me, the reason why a lot of people ask me that, you know, if you do Bollywood, and then your songs also will get uplifted. But I do not believe that. Because many times, like, uh, uh, if you look at a composer like uh, Vishal Dutta, okay, Vishal is a very good friend of mine, a, a fantastic human being, a really, really good person. So, and he's been, a, I've known him so for the last 23, 24 years. Now, he does Bollywood music, but Bollywood music is far more popular than, the, than his pentagram music or his music that he does from the heart, which is all about social messages. People know him only that. And if he performs his pentagram music, people in the audience shout that, Shila ki jawani karo, you know, ye sab karo, you know, so that, so basically what I'm trying to say is that I would rather be very less known for songs that define me as a person rather than being extremely well known for songs that do not define me as a person. So that's it. Uh, uh, hi, uh, Vicky ji, my question is from you. Hi, hi, hi. hi, hi. Uh, आपने भी काफी कुछ म्यूजिक के बारे में कहा म्यूजिक के ओरिजिनलिटी के बारे में कहा और मैं सिर्फ ये जानना है आपसे कि आपने जो नेशनल तो I believe that what you're talking about वो हो रहा है अभी like you know people are feeling feeling pride about our own inherent culture people are feeling pride about being Indian and that's happening all over the world it's not just with us it's also happening with the Indian diaspora because I go everywhere my music is predominantly Indian and I see that I'm able to perform my music anywhere in the world, you know, to audiences everywhere. Like for example, I recently performed at the World Health Organization, the WHO headquarters in Geneva. There was not a single Indian person in the audience. It was just, you know, people from all over the world, mainly Europe and America and Australia and Africa, all these countries. And our entire set from beginning to end was in Indian languages. And it was Indian music. And even that was very, very appreciated. 
So the thing is that I think people all over the world are appreciating uh, Indian art, and uh, because I can only speak about art right now, but in, uh, they're appreciating Indian art, and at the same time, Indian artists are feeling proud to be Indian artists. So that is happening right now, because, uh, like, where's the sound coming? There's a mic, I think, that is on. Anyway, so, so that is uh, so that is happening, and you know, and I perform with a lot of Indian musicians, and I travel with them all over the world. Like, my uh, khatam player, hai, tabla player, hai, sitar player, hai, flute player, hai, jo, mere saath pure, uh, I mean that we travel around the world doing concerts, and these musicians have become so busy in the last two to three years because they're not just performing with me; they're performing with other international artists everywhere in the world. Some with jazz musicians, with pop musicians, with other musicians all over the world. So that is happening. You know, this pride of being Indian, that is happening. It's just that we have to accelerate it. We have to do it Because it's happening slowly, it's moving in the right direction, but we have to accelerate it. Uh, and lastly, what's next from your side of the discussion? Yeah, of course. So I've got another album that is releasing on the 18th of August, uh, an album called Police Beyond Borders. Uh, so that, uh, I mean, that it's basically, uh, there is a band, uh, the, the Police, which is uh, one of the greatest bands in in the history of rock and roll music. So, Unkai, drummer and the founder of the band, Stuart Copeland, uh, I collaborated with him on my previous album, Divine Tides, which won two Grammy Awards. Now, this is this album is another collaboration with him. So, that album, again, with a lot of Indian music, a lot of Indian languages, and uh, this album will be releasing on the uh, 18th of August. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be in Mumbai. I'm going to be in the Grammy Award. 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 I'm going to Correct. It's very बहुत मुश्किल है बोलने के लिए कि कितना reach होगा because again you know हमारा कोई media plan नहीं है हमारा कोई support नहीं है कोई बड़ा label के साथ और uh, you know, television ke saath koi tie up nahi hai, kuch bhi nahi hai. So it will all depend upon you, the media, as to what the reach will be. So, just help me, help me. So, what do you think about the UK? Do you think the UK will be published? Yes, it will be published. Who will publish it? They will publish it. They will publish it. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.